Well, I had to bring out the sprinklers. We haven't had rain in a few days and it looks like we're not gonna have rain for a few more days. So what I thought I'd do is put one of my catch cups, or cut catch cups around the lawn here. This one here is catching this. Whoop! It's one orbit sprinkler. I'll show it to you here in a second that actually does a pretty good job as far as distribution uniformity. Uh, they break down. Not easy to fix, but if you take care of them, they maybe last a little longer. <clears throat> so that one's spraying out on the edge of my lawn here. I've got a catch cup off to my left there, one over there, one near my sidewalk. I'm trying to avoid the sprinkler hitting the gardens because that'll just lead to fungus problems. I water the garden separately. <clears throat> then at the end of the line here, I have one of the Orbit traveling sprinklers. The idea of the catch cups, you know, that generally the water isn't distributed equally depending on how they're set up. So you put one a couple feet away from the center where it's going to spray and then farther out. Gives you an idea how well the water is distributing. These, uh, Orbit traveling ones are pretty uniform, one of the best that I've tested. So, good option, especially if you've got a large area. My front lawn here, 4,900 square feet or so. And since the uh, traveling sprinkler is circular, it doesn't really do a good job getting down in this far corner here, it just kind of leaves a ring here. So that's why I kind of have to have a separate one. Watering in the morning here, because I want to be able to grass to dry out. And then it's time for another mow. Catch cup over near the road. Have it shoot into the road just a little bit so that you get good irrigation right out to the curb line. Otherwise, it'll dry out pretty fast. And it'll travel down the backyard here. You got a catch cup here. See how much it gets filled. I got both of them on the low setting. So it'll take the better part of the morning to get through this area. Then I will pick up the catch cups, get the measurements, and you'll kind of see uh, what kind of distribution I got for the water. So I guess the point of the video is if you buy a dozen of these catch cups, they're not that expensive, a little over $20. And you have sprinklers, even if it's an irrigation system or uh, hose-type sprinklers. It's good to have a set of these to kind of test how well you're putting down your quarter, half, or one inch of water that you're planning to do in a sprinkling watering session. And see if it's actually coming down uh, to your expectations. Sometimes you'll find out you might have to run a little bit longer or a little bit shorter it's not a perfect science but having these catch cups kind of gives you a good measurement because you can look at a sprinkler and have an idea that you think it's nice and uniform it should be nice and uniform but in reality <clears throat> you got to test it or else you don't really know so when I showed in my prior video about these catch cups uh, I took this one here. Every 25 milliliters is a tenth of an inch. So, to, rather than uh, what you see people putting down uh, cat food cans or tuna fish cans, uh, up to the first line here, that's only a tenth of an inch. That's why it's nice to have it graduate out here. So, for each 25 milliliters, tenth of an inch, so there's 25, 50 milliliters, that's two tenths, all the way up to the top line here which is 200 milliliters that's about eight tenths of an inch and I think actually if you go very to the very top you'll uh, be close to an inch probably over an inch but that's kind of the rule of thumb 25 milliliters is a tenth of an inch so get yourself a set of these cups they're very handy
I've already adjusted it, so it's just <clears throat> now going just a little bit into the road. Sprinklers come through here already. Pretty much right on 200 milliliters, so eight tenth of an inch is what we put out here. So this one's sitting at 50 milliliters, which is two tenths of an inch. Got a ways to go yet. So that's the one down there I just measured at 50 milliliters. The one that's closer in here. already sitting at a hundred. I think mainly that is is I put the little uh, deflector on it. Just one of these top tabs you can see. It's splitting the, the stream and basically closer in cups are going to get more fluid in it than anything out on the outer edge. So you got to be careful about that. So here's the one on the, the other edge also. It's also right about a hundred. So it's doing pretty good up this way. Got the ladder out to change the batteries in this in my weather station. It takes four AA batteries. They recommend you use these Energizer Ultimate Lithiums, which are very wide temperature operation. So in Minnesota, with the cold as it gets here, uh, that's the kind you need to use. They last two years in the weather station. So just mark the date when I replace them on here, and we'll go for another two years. Got them replaced, just gonna put the cover on. Just about finishing up here. I'll measure this one, this one, this one. That one probably has a little bit from both sprinklers. But you can see out on the road, we're just catching the edges, which is perfect. A little bit more up near the sidewalk here. All right, check the first one here. Right around 100. Got a little bit more in it. Maybe, maybe 120. So 5 tenths. I'm gonna grab this one quick. Right on 100. This one I expect to have more in it. Nope. A little spillage. Yeah. Is that 130, 135? Last one here. That one's pretty full. Maybe 140. 
Tout un roman d'amour poétique et pathétique, mais well, nul montant. Tout un I don't roman d'amour poétique. Have a good day. 